Good afternoon, Houston, and welcome to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever. Are you fearful that better health seems out of your reach, regardless of how hard you try or whatever you do? Are you afraid of suffering with heart disease or diabetes or lingering with stroke or cancer? Or do you avoid thinking about these things because you'll just try to make the best of it, whatever happens? Are you limited by joint pains or finding that you can't run from your headaches? Maybe you're hesitant to try something new because you're afraid that what you'll do is wrong, or maybe because you'd better be right or nothing will ever help. Regardless of what might be happening with your health problems, these next few minutes could be the answer to your prayers. Unless, of course, you're convinced that your doctors have done everything possible, or if you've already decided to have surgery, but you're waiting till you worsen further. But if you hold out any hope at all, then you should know that we see desperate people every day, people skeptical about whether anything we do can make a difference in their lives, and sure enough, many of them are pleasantly surprised. Maybe you could be one of them. After all, the only thing you have to lose is your discomfort, your fear, your worry, maybe even your anger that no one has really listened to you or that no one has been able to help you. We'll be talking about what you can do to get out of your pain and get on with your life. I've practiced for 25 years, never believing that you're suffering from a deficiency of one or more drugs or that an operation is probably the best answer. Whatever ails you, God built your system to repair itself and to restore more normal function. That, in a nutshell, is the whole buzz on the topic of alternative or holistic medicine that you've been hearing about these past few years. Drugs and surgery can be helpful, but true natural healing depends on three factors. First, find what's blocking you from feeling better and remove it. Second, find what trace factors you might be missing but you need for repair and provide them. And third, find what switches need to be turned on and turn them on. We'll share practical pointers to help you improve with the most common problems seen in doctors' offices. Practical preventive medicine updates to help reduce your risk factors for the most serious diseases that claim our comfort and then our lives. And practical ways to reduce your risks and improve your results with drugs and surgery that you might need. As I've said for years, when life is your choice, failure is not an option. So learn more today on how you can succeed. And if what we offer doesn't apply to you right now, then share this life-saving information with family or friends who do need to know. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is no new thing under the sun. So let's see what we might learn from those who've walked the path ahead of us. John Calvin said, The majesty of God in itself goes beyond the capacity of human understanding and cannot be compre comprehended by it. We must adore its loftiness rather than investigate it so that we do not remain overwhelmed by so great a splendor. What an awesome way to talk about human health and how it happens because we are the most marvelous creation and the way we work is such a beautiful, beautiful way. Bill from Spring called to ask me how to treat the impossible, like rheumatoid arthritis. And, you know, arthritis comes in two main categories. There's degenerative or wear and tear arthritis called osteoarthritis. That's where we wear down, especially from injuries. And we've talked about that with reconstructive therapy. But there's a whole other kind called an immune type of arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus arthritis, where your body, for whatever reason, and there are several, begins to attack its own tissues. We have a busy show today, so we'll get right to our first guest who's going to help share with you the progress that is possible in taking care of people with devastating illness. We're joined this afternoon by Robert Faust, one of our friends from Kingwood, Texas. Good afternoon, Mr. Faust. Good afternoon. How are you? Oh, we're wonderful, and I really appreciate your joining us because your story is such an incredible story. Well, happy to share it with you. Well, thank you. You know, uh, when I saw you, I was quite impressed with how uh, labored your efforts were in getting around. Yeah, I was uh, in in a great deal of pain, a uh, great deal of joint swelling, could barely move, and it affected virtually every every joint in my body. Literally. Literally. Uh, there was there was no movement that I could make that didn't hurt uh, from my shoulders all the way down to my fingers, from my hips all the way down to my toes. They were just Absolutely no movement that I could make that didn't hurt. And and you've suffered like this for years? Uh, probably about nine nine years, eight or nine years. 
and you've had, uh, happily, you didn't get a lot of the routine medical treatments. Uh, when I first had the onset of it, I went to see some regular doctors, and they were the ones who diagnosed it as rheumatoid arthritis, and they offered me a menu of <laughs> drugs. Here's and, a buffet. Take some. That's right. With with all the side effects. Uh-huh. And after we read all the possible side effects, uh, when I say we, my wife helped me through this, um, we just decided that was not a chance that we wanted to take. You That's know, right. We figured my body's already burdened by the disease. Why burden it with the side effects of the drugs as well? And figured there had to be uh, another way to treat it that was more supportive. And you did indeed find that nutritional approaches provided you quite a bit of comfort for some time, didn't you? They did. Uh, before before we found you, I, I went to another nutritionist who advised me that I had been doing my diet all wrong. I made some major changes and experienced really, it took about a year and a half, and then I experienced about a year of good feeling. And that was a blessing. That was wonderful. And then things began to deteriorate again. And Mm. that occurred for the next five or six years. And then we heard about you and came to visit with you uh, last August. And I was really at my wit's end. Didn't know where else to turn or what else to do. But the nice thing is you did keep doing something. You didn't give up. Right. Right. And when I talked with you, I told you, you know, we've got a, a, a lot of things to look at. And I, I hopefully didn't overwhelm you because you did certainly start going with me very quickly on the program. And how quickly did you notice improvement? Well, uh, it, it, so it's been a very, very gradual thing, you know, since last August. And as, as time went along, it seemed every week or two weeks... I would make a move without thinking about it, and like I'd reach over with my left arm or left hand and touch my right shoulder, and then it would occur to me, you know, three weeks ago, I couldn't do that. Or I would bend over to tie my shoes, and I wouldn't have to grit my teeth in pain, and it would occur to me, you know, a month ago, I couldn't do that. And Every week, it seemed like there was another small movement that was a little bit better. And there, there are many things that I can do today that I wouldn't even have dreamed of being able to do last August. Uh, for instance, my shoulders and elbows and wrists were so swollen and the movement was so restricted that I couldn't even think about putting on a T-shirt or a polo shirt. Every shirt that I wore had to be a button-down button shirt because I, I just couldn't go through the movements to pull it over my head. Wow. And today, I have no prize. Reach in the closet, grab one, pull it over my head, and I'm gone. It's still a little bit stiff, but, you know, it, it, it's not that bad. And, and, you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on our show this afternoon is because you're still in process of getting better. And, and we don't like to have people who just say, oh, well, that's impossible for me to achieve because so-and-so has done it for years and they're finally fixed. But you're fixing and you're steadily improving, and we wanted to share that with people uh, because we've looked at you for nutritional deficiencies of vitamins and minerals and toxic metals like mm-hmm. lead and mercury and cadmium and nickel and things that you know, we, we're all exposed to in this 20th century mm-hmm. that affect the way our immune systems work. Mm-hmm. And, and this is an immune system disease where you're attacking your own body. Exactly, yeah. And, and, and we, we've covered a lot, of, a lot of ground. And you said at the first, uh, uh, one of the first meetings when you gave me the, the menu of supplements that I would be taking, <laughs> yes. your approach was to take a broad range approach because you'd, you'd never really know which one is causing the problem. That's right. And, and, and we documented deficiencies in, in healing hormones like DHEA and pregnenolone and, and uh, even had you on uh, some uh, uh, healing hormones like testosterone and progesterone. And, and yeah. uh, these things have all together, including thyroid even, I'm looking at your chart right here, along with removing the toxic metals, have been the picture of, of improving you. 
Yes, exactly, exactly. And you know, you I don't know that I don't know that there is a way to point at just one, and it probably was a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, and we even put you on oxygen for low oxygen levels too. Yeah, yeah, I've been on that for probably about four or five months now as well. And how would you say that's working? Uh, it all, you know, like, like I say, it's difficult to point at any That's one right. thing. It, it all just, fits together. It's all, it's all working uh, much, much, much better, and I'm, I'm just really pleased. You know, the, the point in having you, Mr. Faust, this afternoon is to show people that just pointing you in the right direction, your body takes time for the healing to happen, but you have to be pointed in the right direction. Yeah. And, and what you're changing now are things for the rest of your life, not just for how you feel right now. Well, that, that's the way I look at it. Uh, you know, I'm here where I am today, much, much better than I was last August. And this coming August, I'm going to be better than where I am now. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that with us this afternoon, and we really do appreciate your honesty. Sure. And uh, we wish you all the best, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, and I, I appreciate your help a tremendous amount. I couldn't couldn't have done it without you. I know God helped too, but but you you showed the, the way, and I, I really really do appreciate it. He's the boss, and I'm a good helper. That's right, you are. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. You too. Thank you, sir. The time is about eleven past the hour, and you're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge on Star Seven Ninety KBME, the best medical updates ever. Your extended health forecast is brought to you now by Life Celebrating Health in Humble, near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Our crystal ball shows clear to partly cloudy with the winds of change blowing. Are you acting more like an ostrich, burying your head in the sand because you don't feel able to deal with your health problems? Then your tail feathers will be getting wet when partly cloudy skies change to rain. Perhaps you're clucking around kind of happy that a new medication has you feeling better, but not realizing that those fancy patches and band-aids might not be the best for you. If you're not changing anything and simply hoping for the best because you've been feeling pretty good or maybe you're afraid or unsure, then cloudy to very stormy skies are on your horizon. Or just maybe you're ready to make changes and regain and maintain better health. Then sunny skies are coming your way. At Life Celebrating Health, you can depend on us as partners in your health care and we'll design personalized programs to help keep your days sunny. And we'll show you how to spend less and get more. Call for your free telephone consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Ask to receive our free e-newsletter. Just share with us your email address or send your questions to us through our Internet website, www.healthchoicesnow.com, because unlike the weather... You do have choices for better health. And this afternoon, we are joined by one of my dear friends who is absolutely phenomenal in sharing with the world how rheumatoid arthritis and the similar ones like lupus and scleroderma and other such diseases can really be treated. I'm I'm pleased and, and privileged to introduce to you Perry Chaptelain, the Executive Director and Secretary of the Arthritis Trust of America. Perry, Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Well, hello, John. I'm real flattered by your introduction. Well, it's so true, and you know, I've known you for 20 years and uh, been on your medical advisory board for almost 10. Yes. And I still look back. You know, I, I pulled up your Internet uh, site again. That's arthritistrust.org. And, you know, I read your story, and every time I go, it's hard for me to believe that Perry was that sick, but you were. Oh, yes, I was sick, indeed. In fact... I was even contemplating giving up the life, which is something I probably wouldn't have done, but but it was that bad. And, and when we say that bad, you're talking about just like what everybody else with rheumatoid arthritis that gets worse and worse is suffering with. Yes. And you discovered a treatment. Tell us about how that discovery happened, Perry. Well, I'd like to point out, first of all, that that happened, uh, my sickness, 25 years ago. I'm now 79, and I'm still bouncing around. That's kind of uh, nice. Yes, how it happened. There's a very brilliant man by the name of Roger Wyburn Mason. He was an M.D. and a Ph.D. in England. He was uh, world-renowned for uh, nerve diseases, but he branched off into trying to solve the rheumatoid disease problem. 
And uh, he tried a number of things that seemed to work, but they were very dangerous. One of them was uh, copper chloride. Another one was bile. And he gave those up because they really had bad effects on the patients, although he did get some well. Now, mind you, this started way back before 1964. Right. He was he was struggling with a very difficult disease without really any of the fancy arthritis drugs we have now. That's correct. And he worked with a Vice Admiral Stam, uh, who was also a world-renowned protozoologist in, in England, and the two together concluded prior to 1964 that they had identified the cause of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, let me say very quickly... We no longer believe that they did identify the cause. We haven't proved it, and we haven't not proved it. But we do know that there are microorganisms of some nature that his treatments did indeed uh, solve and uh, do indeed affect the course of arthritis. Right. And uh, he announced all this back in 1964. It was later on a doctor by the name of uh, Robert Bingham, who is now dead, one of our founders, uh, original fo- founder of this uh, foundation, uh, went to visit him and came back and wrote up a story on it. And another doctor by the name of Jack Blunt, who was a little old country doctor in Philadelphia, Mississippi, uh, had had rheumatoid arthritis from the time that he was uh, in medical school. You know, I hadn't realized it was that long. He never, in his his demeanor, never betrayed that kind of pain pattern. Literally, he tried to commit suicide several times. I did not know that. And he was an alcoholic, and he was drug-ridden, all because of the pain of arthritis. Oh, yeah. Very early on, you find out how to get rid of that pain. Yeah. And, (laughs) of course, he also had a couple of hip operations. Right. uh, His hands and and feet were all shriveled up. It was a wonder that, in fact, he couldn't hardly use a hypodermic on his patients when he did go back to work. Oh, wow. He had to have somebody else do most of the work for him. But uh, <clears throat> Dr. Blunt uh, tried desperately to get a hold of the same medicine Roger Wyburn Mason was using. And that, that was over in England, right? Yes, that was finally clotrimazole. And uh, he couldn't do it, but he accidentally found, he said the Lord must have been with him, he found metronidazole in his wife's bathroom in a drawer. <laughs> okay. And... <laughs> He he said, "Well, this looks like it's chemically similar to clotrimazole." He looked he looked it up, and he says, "I don't know what dose to take." So he literally overdosed himself. Oh! And he got very sick. He got a Jarish Herxheimer reaction. Yes, a very severe Herxheimer, and uh, he noticed uh, that he felt a little better. So he tried it again, and lo and behold, before you know it, here's this this shriveled up, crippled pain ridden man that was now free of the disease for the first time since he was a youngster. And uh, he then brought in about 30 of his older patients. He he was not practicing medicine at this time, but he brought in about 30 of them. And these 30, those that stayed with him, which were most of them, tried this experimental uh, program, and virtually all of those that stayed with him got well. So based on that, he opened up his program again. He became became began practicing medicine. And, Real uh, medicine, medicine that worked. Yes, and uh, that's how I ran into him. My uh, my son's eldest son's wife's uh, friend, who lived 250 miles away, had gone to see him down in Philadelphia, Mississippi, and came back well. Wow. And, uh, well, she didn't come back well, but she got well after the trip. She was improving, that's right. Yeah, and uh, so she told she told that chain of events back to me, and I wrote Dr. Blunt a letter. I said, I understand you have something new in arthritis. Uh, would you mind telling me what it is? I figured he'd, he'd, you know, fluff me off to my family doctor like so many others do. Right. But instead he sent me two prescriptions without charge and directions on how to use it. Wow. I brought those to my family doctor, and uh, he looked at him. He says, well, Perry, they won't do you any good, but it won't hurt to try. Right. Which was a fortunate statement. 
Well, it's it's nice to have someone give you that kind of honesty. Yeah. Perry, I'm going to ask you to hold the sure, results on that ahead. for just a moment. Sure. It's now about 20 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME with the best medical updates ever. Let's pause briefly for this public service announcement on fire safety. Smoke can kill in two ways, quickly in a house fire or slowly from secondhand smoke. Thousands of children are harmed every year by smoke inhalation. So never smoke inside, indoors, and never allow a cigarette to just burn. Let's give our children the chance to breathe free. This is a message from Life Celebrating Health. This week is Headache Awareness Week. Call for your copy of our CDs on the incredibly successful migraine and other headache treatments at Life Celebrating Health. And remember that June is National Safety Month. That's why we talk about fire safety as well. And also it's National Scleroderma Month. And we're talking with Perry Chapdelaine about those kinds of diseases. And for our blast from the past, remember the Burma Shave Roadside signs. Here's one for you. The safest rule, no ifs or buts, just drive like everyone else, is nuts. Burma Shave. We're joined this afternoon by, uh, by Perry Chapdelaine. I almost introduced you as doctor because, you know, I've always thought of you that way, but you're not. Well, my you, eldest son is. Your eldest son, so we'll take that as Dr. Chapdelaine there. But you were a patient suffering, and you got these prescriptions and said, well, what the hell? Yeah, I tried it, and believe it or not, six weeks later, I was well. That's just awesome, isn't but it? But it took me about two years longer to learn that there's more to it. That, right. That you've got to do something about nutrition, candidiasis, and so forth. And then since then, we've learned that there are a whole host of things that a person may have to look into. Exactly, and and that's part of uh, what your medical board gives you direction on is what things are working. And, and on your website, and I do want to put in a, a plug for that now, it's it's www.arthritistrust, T-R-U-S-T, Dot org, because you have put so much information on the website about the directions that people need to be thinking about in order to get better. Yes, indeed. And, and it's not just treating for the, quote, infection. And I tell patients that, you know, we, we've done studies at, at Duke and elsewhere, and we haven't been able to find the bugs that uh, Wyburn Mason was talking about. But the treatment program still works about three times out of four. Uh, I would like to uh, mention that... Uh, I've come to the conclusion that that it's pretty much like the camel with all the straws on his back, that uh, there are many different causes of rheumatoid disease. Right. And you have to remove them one at a time or two at a time, and finally you reach the point where the body will repair itself. Exactly. And that's basically what our website is about, and that's what all of you doctors have taught me. Well, you know, we had guidance from you in the beginning that, that this is a an important treatment program not to be done wrongly because patients can feel much more sick and just avoid the treatment program. And if you do it right and ease them through it and get them through that first early period when they say, geez, you know, I'm not sure I feel better, I feel worse, yeah, that's, that's okay. We, we understand. We're going to work you through that. And within weeks, they can be dramatically improved. Amen. John, do, I, do you have time for another case history? Absolutely, Perry. Uh, this is one that's a little offbeat. It's going to be in our next newsletter. Uh, Good. Uh, it was it was sent to me a case history sent to me by uh, a doctor Laura K Free F R E Y you might know her yes she had a a cat by the name of Miso that she loved very much and she gave that cat every kind of treatment that a human would get blood tests and radiographic tests and everything else when it got sick the cat was so sick with swollen up joints that. She finally decided the cat was going to die. Then she picked up one of our books, which, by the way, are all free on our website. And she read it and brought that to her doctor's office, the veterinarian's office, and he read it. He said, well, the cat's probably going to die anyway, so it won't hurt to try it. Sounds like my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and so they tried it. And uh, the cat went through a very ferocious Herxheimer. And uh, let's, got... let's just tell people, Herxheimer is the reaction you get when foreign proteins are detected by your body, like when you're killing something off, and, and you're, you're blasting the body with all these remnants of what was there. 
Yes, I'm sorry I didn't mention that. That's I'm so fine. used to using it. And, uh, and the Herxheimer makes you feel sick, and we have to nurse people through that. And, and it's actually pretty easy to do once you know how to do it and once yeah. you know how to predict it. Basically, it's an intensification of the very disease symptoms that exactly. you're trying to get rid of. Exactly. And uh, at any rate, the cat did get well. Now, the, the joints were eroded, so it couldn't jump around anymore, but right. she was so happy about that cat getting well. And stopped hurting and stopped moping around with swollen, tender joints. Yes. You know, if you've ever had an animal with tender joints, you know exactly you don't touch them. Mm, oh, <laughs> incidentally, through the, through the Herxheimer, it apparently got a very nasty temper, too. <laughs> Oh, well. You know, uh, and a lot of patients with, with uh, rheumatoid diseases end up with a nasty temper because they were so preoccupied with their pain. Absolutely. I've, I've been through it, and I've also been through the Herxheimer in the past. And I've, I've had it so severely that I frankly didn't care whether the world turned or not. But the next day when my body cleaned out all that debris, man, I felt like I was on top of the world. And it kept getting better, didn't it? Yes. You know, when people hear someone like you talking about this, they go, oh, I don't know. It, it, you know, when, when you say 25 years ago you were suffering with rheumatoid arthritis, because it's a steadily progressive degenerative disease. I mean, people get worse and worse. They don't get better. Of course, there's no cure for it. You know that. Right. <laughs> and, and the only thing is, is that if you're trying to cure it with cortisone, that's not a cure. No, that you, covers up the symptoms and degrades your system even worse and exactly. faster. Exactly. And, and if you try and cover it up with gold, that's just a different toxic way of doing things. Uh, so of course, the, the latest all rage in the, in the circles of getting people uh, feeling better is metronidazole. And I frankly haven't found any scientific evidence for using it anywhere. Right. The, uh, you know, the problem with this is that when you, when you look at the, the ways in which we try doing these treatment programs. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a, uh, a gentleman who's the uh, grandson of Charles Lindbergh who's doing a uh, flight to uh, get people's awareness of new rheumatoid disease treatments because we've got all these fancy new drugs. Uh-huh. And uh, I have contacted his foundation and said, hey, listen, you know, we actually have had some treatment programs that uh, you can combine together to do pretty successful treatment and get rid of the need for daily drugs and mm-hmm. such. And uh, the response that I got was uh, no response at all. <laughs> that, that's typical. And it's, and it's sad typical. because, yeah. uh, you know, the, there are treatments out there, and they're promoting drug treatments instead. Uh, when I see someone come in, I say, listen, here's the deal. I've got a dozen treatments for rheumatoid-type illness, okay? Mm-hmm. One of these might be the most critical one for you, but I like to find which three or four seem to be the key ones for starters, and do them all in low doses and let them all work with each other. Well, one of the things our foundation has learned, uh, I guess by growing pains, is that we're not interested in selling a particular treatment. We're interested in getting people well. Yes. And that's a whole different ballpark. It's like uh, uh, I went to visit uh, three doctors in Mexico who seemed to be having pretty good luck with various things. And they described a, an American citizen that came down with rheumatoid arthritis and wanted treatment. And they sent him back home. They said, not until you get all the mercury out of your mouth will we treat you. <laughs> and lo and behold, that, that American citizen got rid of his rheumatoid arthritis immediately on getting rid of the mercury in his mouth. And while this practically never happens, it did in that case. And it just shows that yeah. you start with first things first. Right. And, and people don't know how damaging mercury and the other toxic metals are to the immune system, but we're talking about an immune system disease, which is where your body attacks your body. And, and I tell people, your, your immune system is pretty strong. You will always win. Uh, but then again, you're the target, so you yeah. will always lose. Yes, yes. And, uh, very, and, <laughs> very good. Very good. That, that's why people walk around and they're all gnarled up. They've literally destroyed themselves. Yes. Very powerful disease. When you talk with doctors, and I'm sure sometimes they call you, do, you know, their skepticism yes. must be obvious. Yes, I've had quite a number of calls from doctors. And they say, I don't believe it. No, the ones that call usually are calling because a patient has given them a book of ours or oh, an really? article, and they're usually open-minded and want to know exactly how to do it. So the others aren't calling? Uh, the others are not calling at all, no. As a matter of fact, I just got feedback from one up in Vancouver, Canada, that laughed at us because of the treatments we recommended. 
And the little boy that it was about was nine years old, and he's virtually, uh, well, he's, he's in such bad pain that he really wants to die. And yet the doctor uh, cannot help him. They sent him home from the hospital, say, well, we can't help you. But when the mother talks to the doctor about taking our approach, they just laugh. Well, say, well, that's funny. You know, that's really humorous. Yeah, you're always down on what you're not up on. Isn't yeah. that the truth? Perry, will be right back with you. It's now about 30 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Sometimes, especially when our attention is focused on health problems, we forget that laughter is the best medicine. Our joke for today is kind of for the graduates here. My wife and I were at a high school reunion, and uh, as I looked around, I noticed that the other men in their expensive suits and their bulging stomachs, uh, not quite like when we graduated years earlier, proud of the fact that I weighed just five pounds more than I did when I was in high school, the result of trying to beat a living out of a rocky hillside farm, I said to my wife, I'm the only guy here who can still wear the suit he wore when he graduated from high school. She glanced at the prosperous crowd, then back at me and said, You're the only one who has to. (laughs) Oh, how life brings its twists. You know, today, the first hot air balloon flight, 1783, the Montgolfier brothers in France ushered in the whole new era of aviation. And now, until just a few months ago, you could swing across the Atlantic in just a couple of hours. But we still have to take now several hours to get there in our slower jet airplanes. Tomorrow the 6th is the anniversary of D-Day, the Allied invasion of Europe, 1944, forever changing the course of history. And earlier this week on the 3rd, Ed White became the first American astronaut to walk in space in 1965. What a wonderful, glorious achievement. Let's get straight to the question, what are you waiting for? Sick and tired of feeling sick and tired? Angry at not feeling better? Threatened with pain or limitations? Or perhaps fearful about the future? Can you trust that you'll find the answers, the the ones you need right now? You better take this responsibility seriously. You've got to find the answer somehow, and you'd better be right because your survival might be in the balance. So listen to what I have to offer. Over the past two dozen years, I've developed and improved integrative treatment programs to help many people suffering with a great variety of frustrating illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, heart disease, even after surgery, and especially congestive heart failure. Shortness of breath, restless sleep or insomnia, poor circulation and leg pains, hypoglycemia and diabetes, poor memory, even Alzheimer's and other dementias, migraines and other headaches, as we're talking about today, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and other similar diseases, ulcerative colitis and other gut problems, frustrating skin conditions, disabling neck and back pains, sports injuries and arthritis, prostatitis, chronic urinary infections, chronic sinus and lung infections, Hormones, thyroid, sexual performance, PMS, menopause, even menopause. And the list goes on and on and on because health deals with basic body processes, not just squashing particular symptoms. You could feel better than you ever expected. I've lectured on these topics for over 20 years. I've written books and medical papers to share how to make healing happen. The leading authors and newsletter editors in preventive medicine have been personal friends of mine for years. And in my 25 years of practice, I found that very few people know that simple, effective, and cost-conscious solutions are available to help with their problems, starting now. And few people realize that several of the problems for which they're seeing different specialists are often related to the same basic cause, and correcting what is causing one problem might improve several other problems that frustrate, worry, or anger you. Make your health care investment pay even bigger dividends in your future. Get details on our exclusive and unique cashable voucher program that can return to you cash dollars for your future expenses. We're here to save your health and save your wallet as well. And that's what this show is all about, and that's what we're all about at Life Celebrating Health and Humble. Call for a free consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X. P-A-I-N. You're listening to Feeling Better, Naturally, with Dr. John Trowbridge. Invite your family and friends to tune in and join us here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, Saturday afternoons from 1 till 2. And this afternoon, we rejoin Perry Chapdelaine, one of my good friends, Executive Director and Secretary of the Arthritis Trust of America, also known in the past as 
the Rheumatoid Disease Foundation, but really we do much more than just rheumatoid disease, don't we, Perry? Absolutely. And as we've gotten the bigger picture, we really realize how many diseases we do impact. Well, I understand uh, way back when I first knew Roger Wyburn Mason and then Jack Blunt and all the others who have passed away, they've stated many times that there's over 100 different uh, symptoms that they classify as rheumatoid disease. And you've already mentioned some of those, such as lupus and fibromyalgia and so on. These are all your body gone wrong in its defense system, aren't they? Yes, they certainly are. And, and you know, it's interesting when we look at that, and we can we can look at how the body works on things, and we understand it in so many disease processes, and when we start looking at immune system diseases, we seem to put on blinders and ignore what we know from other disease processes. Well, it's interesting that uh, Roger Wyburn Mason made uh, several comments on that, which which really revealed a lot to me. Number one is that that uh, back in the days when the uh, before the TB uh, tubercle bacillus term uh-huh. was known, uh-huh. there was over a hundred different diseases named because of the different body parts that were affected <laughs> by tuberculosis. That's yeah. right. And then when the uh, the TB germ, the tubercle bacillus, was discovered, they all collapsed under one name, like TB of the bone, TB of the skin, TB of the lungs, and so on. And uh, Roger Wyburn Mason pointed out that this is the case we have with rheumatoid disease, that all these different names merely signify the different parts of the body that are being affected. But the disease itself is systemic, as you pointed out, within the body. Right. And it depends upon which body part is being targeted that gives it its name. Right. So you really have, uh, except with some exceptions, you really have... uh, a problem of treating the whole body. Exactly. Not just the target. Exactly. And the target is what gets the attention because that what, that's what people complain about. Yes. You know, I tell people the simple way to think of it is that rheumatoid arthritis is where you attack the, the joints, the, the slide and glide surfaces that make the joints easily move, and that lupus is a, a pattern that a, attacks from the skin on in, mm-hmm. all the coverings that are over the, the bony uh, skeleton, and that then you just start picking the name. Well, dermatomyositis. Well, gee, that's skin and muscles. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all these fancy names get very confusing. The basic underlying thing is the immune system is turned on you. Well, there's another uh, aspect, too, which has to do with age and time. Uh, if in, an embryo, I learned, can also have rheumatoid disease. And when the baby is born, it's called Stills disease. Right. And later on, as the baby uh, grows, it's called juvenile arthritis, and then it's called uh, rheumatoid arthritis, adult rheumatoid arthritis. And it's interesting that when I get feedback from people, they say, well, what do you do for juvenile arthritis? Uh, (laughs) They talk like this is totally different than adult arthritis. And they're not seeing the evolution of it. You know, there's a tribe in Africa that when I was doing linguistic studies in, in college and, and after, that um, they did not have the concept of growth. So they had a separate name for, you know, the, the boy and then the adolescent and the, the young adult and then the man. And the same way they had different names for a, a small tree, a larger tree, a big tree. They didn't have the evolution of this is, you know, a, a, a progression of it. This is separate. Yes. And we do the same thing. We categorize like... The, the facets of a, of a cut stone rather than being able to look at the, at the uh, uh, glass itself and see through the crystal ball that they're all related. Mm-hmm. So. You're right. Roger Wyburn Mason had another comment that uh, really educated me, and uh, this goes against the grain of the immune system being de- defective. But he pointed out that back before uh, uh, the syphilis spirochete was found, uh, the syphilis was an ideal... Uh, immune system disease. It fit all the classifications and characteristics That's of right. immune system disease. That's right. And then once the spirochete was found, why everybody realized, why, gee, that's the effect of this microorganism. And to some extent, rheumatoid disease, with all the different patterns we have, uh, seems to fit this pattern also, in that uh, if, if, the, if the individual did not have a, a genetic susceptibility to the protein products or the uh, whatever the dead protein products or whatever the uh, materials are that exude from the microorganisms, 
Uh, if they didn't have a sensitivity to that, their tissues wouldn't react, and therefore their immune system wouldn't react. Oh, how true, and, and, yeah. and that's a great speculation. I, I did my early research when I was in college and, uh, and uh, then med school on immune system disorders, yeah. and uh, what we knew at that point was that cross-reactions occur. If you, if you make a glove that's an antibody that fits like your hand, um, then you find something else that just has four fingers and no thumb, that glove fits almost pretty good. And all of a sudden, you're attacking a tissue that isn't the hand, but kind of looks close enough. Yeah, excellent analogy. And that's close enough for government work. Perry, we'll be right back with you. It's now about 40 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. We sometimes forget that spiritual centering is an important part of healing, getting better and staying healthier, and Today's verse is from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Just a reminder that we're supposed to keep our lives pretty clean, and that keeps them pretty simple. We're joined this afternoon by Perry Chapdelaine, the Executive Secretary of the Arthritis Trust of America, who's sharing with us some very personal perspectives over, goodness gracious, how many years have you been involved with this now? 1981. 1981. Mm -hmm. And uh, during all that time, you have seen thousands of people getting better. Well, I haven't seen it personally, but I've gotten feedback from a lot of them. You get a lot of stories, don't you? Yes, we do. And in those stories, what's the common thread? Well, I guess we've already discussed some of the common threads. Number one is the almost total misunderstanding that people have that they they get from their lack of education as well as the doctor's lack of education right. that they're going to. Uh, it, it's so common that uh, it's really sad and uh, the the other uh, common thread, is, of course, is is a great excitement when they find out there's a possibility of getting well. Uh, I had talked to a lady today that's called me every day for the last four days. She has a uh, back back problem. She's had an operation for. Her. I don't think she's got rheumatoid arthritis, but she certainly uh, probably pulled a tendon or ligament sometime. And then uh, the traditional treatment was to cut out stuff in the spine, which, which is not a good treatment. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, I was explaining to her the two treatments that I would recommend. One is the intraneural injections developed by our former uh, chief medical ad- advisor, Paul Pivas. Right. Later on by Dr. Prosh. And uh, also to use the sclerotherapy or prolotherapy. And uh, so she's been calling and trying to learn more about it, and she's very excited that there may be a way to solve this pain problem. Of course, you've already mentioned it for your found, your uh, clinic. Right. Yeah. Do you do the internals too? Oh, yes. I, I learned that back in 1983 when you uh, gentlemen first showed that oh. to us. Oh. And uh, I have uh, enjoyed the ability to reach for these different tools. You know, w- when the only tool you have is a hammer, then all the problems you see look just like nails. Yeah. But when you have multiple tools, the idea is how elegantly can you kind of work your way through the recipe for better health? Well, I've known uh, several doctors, not too many. I think Dr. Prosh trained about 600, but I don't know. That, uh, that, Gus Prosh, what a giant. Yeah, I don't know that uh, there are very many in our physician list who identify that as being one of the treatments that they do. But uh, I've known several doctors that have built almost uh, a whole clinical practice on those two things, the intraneurals and the, and the prolotherapy. Right. And, uh, in fact, one of them uh, has come up to visit us several summers now from Mexico, and uh, he gets patients all the way from Alaska flying down there. Wow. Uh, I don't know how you do it in your clinic, but I do know that Prosh, for example, uh, used to combine the interneurals and, and some prolo uh-huh. uh, with some of his treatments of both osteo and, and rheumatoid. Oh, gosh, yes. And he had remarkable success with the patients well, on it. You know, patients need to have pain relief as well as getting better. So, Well, one of the nice things about the, about the interneurals, I'm sure you know, is that uh, you can, for at least a 
short period of time uh, get them through the Herxheimer without exactly. giving them a bunch of bad drugs. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Perry, we're kind of getting close to the end. If you uh, had a take-home message, what would you want? What's the thumbnail message you'd want people to remember? Gee, that you should have asked me that so I could have thought about it all day. <laughs> I don't give you that advantage. <laughs> uh Go to, go to our website and go to Dr. Trowbridge's office. <laughs> oh, you're, you're sneaking through on that one. The website is www.arthritistrust.org, A-R-T-H-R-I-T-I-S-T-R-U-S-T.org. And there's just a phenomenal amount of information on there. And, you know, as I've said in some of our public service announcements, uh, you're more than happy to refund donations if people later decide, gee, I really didn't think uh, I, I wanted to give money this way, but... We do live on donations through the Arthritis Trust, don't we? Yes, we do. I've I've gone for many a month without any, but recently we had uh, uh, somebody who left us about six hundred thousand dollars, which wonderful. I, we're we're going to find a good way to use for for rheumatoid disease. Oh, absolutely. But uh, y- yes, we we do live on on donations, and uh, and uh, we try to uh, give everybody. Uh, information on how to get well or doctors to go to regardless of whether they donate or not that's right however if people are dissatisfied we're perfectly willing to give the money back and that's very rare because they really get a tremendous amount of information I perry chapdelaine thanks for joining us this yeah, afternoon thanks for having me god bless you and we'll see you soon all right god bless bye-bye it's now about 46 past the hour here on star 790 kbme the best medical updates ever For your better health, let's pause briefly for this public service announcement regarding the Heimlich Maneuver. You know, you can't get air into water-blocked lungs, and this is the summer season when drownings happen. So in 1982, the University of Pittsburgh research proved four Heimlich Maneuvers, which can be done in less than 10 seconds, expel all the water from the airway and lungs. The Heimlich Maneuver presses your diaphragm upward into your chest, and that diminishes the volume of your chest cavity, and that compresses your lungs, and of course that blows the water out. In a choking person, this causes the flow of air that carries away the object blocking the airway, and in a drowning victim, compressing the lungs expels the fluid from the lungs and clears the airway. The Heimlich Maneuver, by pressing upward on the diaphragm, frequently jump-starts the breathing, And in rare instances, CPR is then necessary after the maneuver removes the water. And by virtue of a clear airway, then you can get air into the victim's lungs. Fourteen years ago, the American Red Cross and the American Heart Association recognized the importance of the Heimlich Maneuver for saving drowning victims. And these organizations endorsed the maneuver for resuscitating drowning victims in 1986 the first advance in the treatment of drowning in 25 years. Now, more than 1,000 children needlessly die of drowning at home every year in buckets of water, bathtubs, swimming pools where no lifeguard is present. Usually the first person on the scene is a parent or neighbor. These children die because rescuers perform CPR for drowning, which has been ingrained in the minds of the public for 30 to 40 years. But, you know, almost everyone knows the Heimlich Maneuver. To save these children, the public must be aware that you use the Heimlich Maneuver first. Hank Heimlich, my good friend, developed this. This maneuver has saved the life of my daughter and countless thousands around the world. For your information, www.heimlichinstitute.org, H-E-I-M-L-I-C-H, institute.org. The number 513-559-2391. You can get from them posters to put up to show how... You can save drowning victims around your pool. And today's celebrity birthdays. Remember Aesop's fables? I think one of the biggest fables is that they're saying June 4th was Aesop's birthday. I don't even think they had June back then. Dr. Ruth, everybody remembers our sexologist, Ruth Westheimer, born June 4th, 1928. I guess she's still thinking about sex. June 5th, jazz sex entertain... Jazz sex entertain... Kenny G, 1956, and on the 7th, entertainer Dean Martin, 1917, on the 8th, former First Lady Barbara Bush, 1925, and on the 9th, Donald Duck, 1934. Important to get that one in. We're joined with one more patient this afternoon talking about rheumatoid arthritis. This is Patricia Garcia from Buffalo, Texas. We're glad to have you this afternoon. 
Oh, thank you. How are you? Oh, doing wonderful. And you know what? I'm doing wonderful because someone like you is doing wonderful. And that was kind of a, a hopeful thing when we started out, wasn't it? Yes, sir. You know, when you first came to see me, we were talking about doing the the uh, reconstructive therapy, the injection of uh, irritant fluid into your uh, shoulder or neck in order to help the pain that had come from an injury in an automobile accident. That's right. And I immediately said, gee, we can't do your treatment. You were not a happy camper. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Not at all. I said, you know, that your rheumatoid disease test came out slightly positive, but positive enough that we can't do it because that would get you in more trouble than help you out. Yes, sir. And you said, where do we go from here? <laughs> I remember. That was a good question. It was almost a couple years ago. Yes, sir. And at that time, I said, don't worry. We have about a dozen different things to do for rheumatoid disease. And you said, well, why would I get it? <laughs> you know, that was such a legitimate question, too. Yeah, I remember. You, know, you were a healthy bird. You came in. I just said I just had an accident. Yes, sir. Where did I come up with rheumatoid? And, you know, one of the things that I've speculated, and as I described to you, is that when people get injured, your body shears off these pieces of tissue and uh, then recognizes them as different, not supposed to be seen, and starts to react against them. And so it's not actually a rheumatoid disease, but a false reaction. And I said, why don't we just assume it's simple to take care of? I remember that. Turned out pretty simple, didn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we, I was not able, able to dress myself, but thanks to that, I'm, I'm just... I'm just pain-free now. Isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. You know, I, I wanted to share with people, we did uh, some immune-stimulating IVs. Those are in-the-vein treatments. We did some of the Rheumatoid Disease Foundation uh, treatment that we just talked with Perry Chapdelaine about. We did some uh, healing hormones with DHEA and pregnenolone. And, That's right. And, and some of the healing hormones with uh, uh, progesterone and estrogen. Uh, we did some chelation therapy, taking out toxic metals, toxic metal removal with oral chelators. And, uh, you know, we just did a bunch of different things in, in small dose on you. Yes, sir. Yes, How did sir. you feel during all this time? Uh, right now I feel great, but uh, before I was, I was getting impatient, you know. <laughs> impatient. <laughs> remember? This, remember? I was this is getting a, impatient. A, I was like, no, night. this is not going to work. But one day I got <laughs> up and I, I got up in the morning and I dressed myself and I just feel great. No pain. <laughs> yeah. This, this was a lady. Impatient is a nice word to use because you used to grumble at me. Yes. And, and happily I have thick skin. Yes. But you would grumble and you'd say, when are we ever going to treat this thing I came for? Yes. I remember. And we sent you to the laboratory, and your test came back normal, no longer showing rheumatoid, no no cortisone, right? No toxic drugs, no chemotherapy. No, no, no. Which would be the kind of thing that people normally expect with rheumatoid patterns. That's right. And we said, let's get started on the reconstructive therapy treatment, the injections to help strengthen your shoulder. And you have done superb. Super good. I feel great. And you're in training now, aren't you? Yes, sir. You want to tell us? Uh, tell you about how did I feel right now? No, tell us what kind of training you're doing. Oh, I'm, I'm you talking about my school? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm trying to get in the nursing program, so I'm working on my associate's degree. That's right. You've been so, studying biochemistry and anatomy and, and physiology. Biology, and yes, sir. And it, it's, uh, today I went to my government class. It was interesting. Yeah, the, the same government that won't let you have some of the treatments that we like to do for you here. Yes, sir. That's a little frustrating. But, you know, what's been exciting to me is see you come along learning all these kinds of things so that you and I could talk more uh, in detail about the kinds of treatments that we've been using for you. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the real question is, was it worth it? Yes, sir. Yes, definitely, yes. Like I said, I was kind of impatient, but... Uh, you know, I, I had faith that I was going to get well, you know, thanks to you and the Lord. And well, the, well, thank you. You actually also had one other real good help, and that was a wonderful, understanding husband. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, we kind of had to persuade him that waiting was the best thing to oh. do. <laughs> <laughs> and driving down for some of the treatments was the best thing. But, you know, I remember when we first started, when I first saw you back in, in uh, 2003, you were having... Uh, problems with, with uh, pushing and pulling with your shoulder and stiffness and lots of spasm and tenderness every day and pain most of the time and worse with activities. 
all that's improved. Yeah, and, and such a, uh, I had just such a bad day because I was in pain, and, and he trans- he was always patient with me because when you're in pain, you are so unhappy. Oh, you're grumpy, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. I saw you grumpy. <laughs> yes. Not anymore, though. <laughs> no, that is just wonderful. No. If you wanted to share with people about getting better, what would you want them to remember? What did I want them to remember? Yeah, because, you know, they're going to hear this and say, nah, that can't happen to me. Well, you know, remember that it's always hope. And, uh, you know, they kill themselves whenever something happened and find the right person to, that can help them, like, you know, like me. That That's I a... found you, thanks to this friend that recommended you, uh, you know, that you helped this friend years ago. Tell me to go and check with you, and that's what I did. And funny how little chances like that end up making such a difference. Oh, yes, yes. Patricia, thank you for sharing that with us this afternoon. We really do appreciate it. God bless you. Keep getting better. Oh, yes, I will, doctor. Thank you, ma'am. See you soon. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about the take-home message. What what are we really saying here with rheumatoid disease? Well, what we're saying is that, you know, most people talk about cortisone and gold and anti-inflammatories and things like that, but, you know, the major things with cortisone and the other treatments that are often used for rheumatoid disease are things like, oh, goodness, uh, uh, black bloody or tarry stools suggesting bleeding in the gut or various infections like with fungus and yeast and swallowing difficulties and blurred vision and halos around lights and sore throat and fever and muscle cramps and swollen legs or feet, mood changes and fatigue and insomnia, weakness, restlessness, frequent urination, weight gain, the change to having a round face, irregular menstrual periods, dry mouth, mood changes, and all these things. Rarely even irregular heartbeats and skin rashes and fever and joint pains and even mental psychosis or breakdown, hair loss, pancreas inflammation, numbness or tingling in your hands or feet and convulsions and blood clots that are possible and even hallucinations and false senses. And These drugs interact with alcohol and with blood thinners and with anti-diabetes drugs and with water pills, and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And you wonder, what is so good about a treatment like that? And that's indeed what we wonder, because we like to use much safer treatments in our estimation that still produce the results, and that's what we want you to think about. Lindy from Pasadena emailed to ask me about toxic metals. Why are they toxic and how are they toxic and what can be done about them? So next time we'll share with you some special features on when the smile that you flash, especially after eating tuna, might be the kiss of death. Ooh, what a provocative topic. Join us then. Today's show is dedicated to the lives that will be saved, not just the patients, but also their families and friends when People discover that they can awaken the health of their lives by finding safe and effective treatment alternatives for rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and other similar diseases because, you see, the hope is that help is available. And indeed, that's what we find and that's what we talk about and that's what we share with you. Our production engineer today is Mark Fisher. Our production assistants, Catherine Hill, Kathy Guyon, and Rhonda Bird. Thanks for joining me today. Have you learned practical pointers to help you regain and maintain better health? Maybe to help you guide your family or friends toward new solutions for their problems? Audio tape and CD copies of the show are available for your personal reference and to share with family and friends. Simply call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for details. What health problems are bringing you down or limiting your comfort, threatening your future? Share your questions by email. That's info, I-N-F-O, at healthchoicesnow.com. By fax, 281-540-4329, or by mail. Just call 1-800-FIXPAIN for our address, or call to talk with one of our treatment assistants and let us know what special information we might send to you. Receive our free e-newsletter simply by sharing your email address with us and enjoy the free downloads available on our website, www healthchoicesnow.com. Feel free to come by to see what's so special and visit with patients who are feeling better right now. They are anxious to share their successes with you in person. We're next to the Northeast Medical Center Hospital near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for directions or a map because we'd love to show you where better health happens. 
Remember, if your money, your time, your effort, your comfort, or even your life is at stake, get the very best answers and the very best treatment you can find. Rely on experts who can make sense out of your problems, who have the experience to produce results for you. When life is your choice, failure is not an option. Our message is one of hope for a healthier future, and we aim to produce these results for you. Invite your family and friends to join me next week, Saturday afternoon from 1 till 2 on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, exclusively on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Have a great day and a wonderful week.